The war in 1780 continued to see advancements by the British in the southern colonies. But there's a surprise twist in 1780, and it's because of a man named Benedict Arnold. His name has been become synonymous with being a traitor. Now, Arnold was initially a fearless general on the American side. He was actually a militiaman at Boston who showed up to surround Boston and then quickly distinguished himself with his intelligence and his bravery. But one part of his personality was that he also wanted glory and all the credit, and he chafed if he was overshadowed. He was quickly promoted to generalship and actually led an attack on Ticonderoga in 1775, and he proved pivotal in the Battle of Saratoga in 1777, which would bring France into the war. He was an important commander. However, he was also passed over for a promotion by Congress a couple times, and he feuded with other generals, and this bothered him a great deal. Now, he was with Washington at Valley Forge in 1778, where he and the men gave an oath of allegiance to the United States. He had been wounded in battle and had damaged his leg, and so after the British left Philadelphia in 1778, he was given military command of Philadelphia. It was at that time that he courted a young lady who was very sympathetic to the British side. But using her as a go-between, the British began to recruit Benedict Arnold. They had their master spy, a man whose last name was Andre, begin communicating with Arnold through his wife's sewing circle. They often wrote letters and sometimes even used invisible ink to pass messages. Benedict Arnold began giving the British supply locations, troop movements, and was haggling over his compensation if he were to turn sides. At that same time, he was investigated in a formal court-martial because of how he had managed Philadelphia. He was found innocent of two counts. He was found guilty of two counts. And Washington had to publicly admonish him. And this was very shameful. Further, Congress found that he had mismanaged money and had uh, determined that he owed the United States 1,000 pounds. Frustrated, Arnold resigned. In August, however, his military leadership was once again considered and he was given command of West Point. At that time, it was a fort on the Hudson, but it would eventually become the home of the U.S. Military Academy. It was while he was at West Point that he planned in communicating with Andre, to turn West Point over to the British. This was somewhat surprising. Uh, at the very moment that he decided to turn West Point to the British, Washington decided to visit West Point and see how things were going. So Washington, General Knox, the Lafayette, um, and also Hamilton all went to West Point to investigate the fort. Surprisingly, Benedict Arnold was not there, and they wondered where he was. It turns out that Andre had been captured just the day before, and they had looked through his documents and found out Benedict Arnold had turned traitor. And even as people were coming to West Point to capture Benedict Arnold, he had found out Andre was captured, and he slipped away. He fled by boat, and he got away, although... Washington did try to capture him in New York City. Benedict Arnold was made a brigadier general in the British Army and given a great deal of money. Meanwhile, Andre, the spy chief, was hanged. Washington, ever the optimist, said, even though such a high general had turned traitor, it was the first instance of treason in a war that he had expected to include a lot of treasonous activity. So he saw it as a good thing that only one person had turned against the United States. Now what happened next was shameful. Arnold took command of a British regiment, went south and captured Richmond, Virginia. And then he began rampaging across Virginia, attacking towns and destroying supplies and foundries, mills and roads. He was eventually relieved by Cornwallis and then left for England in 1781. After the war, he returned to Canada and became a merchant. However, his name became very well known for being a traitor. 
So over the course of the seven, uh, over 1780, the British continued their strengthening of the South, and Benedict Arnold turned against the United States. 